Hi, this is Lakshmi Kant Tiwari. In this video, I bring you a learning curve in machine learning using Python. Okay, so in this lesson, we will learn what is the learning curve and what is the bias and the variance trade-off, how variance and the bias vary as we increase the training data set. And then we will work on a breast cancer data set and after that i'll show you how you can finally plot a learning curve and then also i'll explain you how increasing a training size does not necessarily increase overall accuracy so moreover what here i'm trying to say is that even if you increase your data set infinitely that doesn't mean that your overall accuracy will increase as you can see here in this plotted learning curve so we will be learning all those things in this video and uh, if you have not watched my previous videos you can go ahead and watch those at my channel KGP Talkie. In KGP Talkie previously I have taught there in symbol learning PCA with Python and, um, and K-mean clustering unsupervised learning, uh, random forest, decision tree, SVM, logistic regression, KNN linear regressions and other python tutorials so without wasting your time let's go ahead and start a brand new lesson on a learning curve in machine learning learning curve is very famous amongst the data scientists learning curve shows the efficiency and the way your machine learning model learns so the learning curves are widely used in diagnostic tool as a diagnostic tool in machine learning for algorithm that learns from a training data set incrementally that means we increase our uh, the data set by some uh, step and then we see the performance of our model and the model can be evaluated on the training data set and on a holdout validation data set after each update during training and it plots the measured performance and uh, that can be shown as like this curve there you can see here uh, the accuracy or performance metrics on the test set, the performance metrics on the training set as we are increasing number of observation, that's mean the size of your data. So the moreover with this train, uh, learning curve, you can understand that how your uh, uh, the data set, if you are increasing the data set, how it is affecting overall performance of your model. That's mean uh, whether it is desirable to increase the data to improve your performance or you need to work on your model simple and uh, the metrics uh, which we use to evaluate the learning curve that is uh, uh, known as uh, a score actually right so that could be uh, uh, the accuracy score or you can say um, uh, uh, loss of your model or loss right so you can uh, plot your uh, uh, plot your uh, model metrics against either accuracy or uh, loss okay and uh, it is more common to use a score that is minimizing such as loss or error whereby better score indicates more learnings and value of 0.0, .0 indicates that the training data set was learned perfectly and no mistakes was made but you know the problem with uh, when no mistakes was made that means the low bias but when your model is having really very low bias in that case your model will be having high variance which is not desirable so for example if you see here in this figure and uh, in these figures in these figures uh, it is trying to uh, fit this data set completely uh, and uh, there is very low bias but if we go ahead and see bias and the variance trade-off we will see here if bias is low then the variance will be the high and in that case the total error will be the high so we have to find uh, some sweet spot where we can minimize the total error not only bias not only variance but we can minimize there the total error so this is known as a uh, bias and the variance trade-off so we need to select some value some in-between value of the bias and the variance 
where total error is reduced and the model complexity is the optimum at that place and um, we can understand this with the following example here let's say we have a n is equal to the 20 set for validation and we are increasing training set from n equal to the 1 10 and 80 so as training set is increasing uh, it is fitting more perfectly okay and uh, then finally we can see that after some point if we increase our training set let's say for infinity then definitely our um, the accuracy and overall validation loss or the training loss will saturate at some point okay so now let's go ahead and plot our learning curve and uh, before plotting definitely we need to import necessary libraries and python package so we are uh, we have imported here the numpy as np matplotlib.py plot as plt sklearn and as uh, we have also imported the random forest classifier from sklearn.ensemble and we are going to work on a breast cancer data set and of course we need to also import learning curve from a model selection perfect now let's go ahead and load our uh, the breast cancer data set that we can load here okay so the load breast cancer okay but before that we need to run this so here we have got our cancer data set so let's go ahead and print the description of a cancer data set okay so here you will see a detailed description of this data set it has 569 instances and it has total 30 uh, numeric feature vectors that's the 30 feature and the feature space feature names are here and uh, if you see the detail total number of feature in details so those are here and it doesn't have any missing values and uh, then finally it has a it has a output classes whether uh, whether the tumor is the malignant or benign okay so these are the two classes so let's go ahead and get this data set into x and the y vector there so we need to first get it into x that's the x dot x is equal to the cancer dot data and then we are going to get y cancer dot target right so we have got here x and y there now i'm gonna get here uh, the train okay perfect so we have got here x and y now we can get it with the shape here x shape is 569 uh, cross 30 that is uh, 569 rows that is the number of data points and 30 columns that is 30 feature vectors now i am gonna uh, call here a learning curve so learning curve here if you don't know about the learning curve you need to press here shift and the double tab you will get a detailed documentation about learning curve there so it takes input as estimator x y and other parameters like a training sizes etc and it also takes a scorings and cross validations right and you can get here also detailed documentations and here verbose is equal to the zero but we are going to set here verbose is equal to the one so let's go ahead and pass the desired parameter into learning curve there we are going to pass here the random forest classifier there so for our learning curve we are going to use here learning uh, random forest classifier then we are going to pass here our uh, feature vectors and the target vectors cross validation cv is 10 and here the scoring i'm gonna use here accuracy and n jobs n jobs says that how many cores in my computer i am gonna use to train this model minus one says that use all our label core and then here i'm gonna put here train sizes in the training size i am going to put here 50 uh, uh, size of the 50 so that is the np dot linear space linear space there i'm going to start from 0 0.01 to of course one that's in the whole data set and i'm going to divide it into the 50 okay so in this way 
and of course apart from this i am going to use here verbose verbose is equal to 1 right perfect and apart from this now you see here the learning curve i have passed almost all the parameters desired parameters but you need to see one more thing that it returns few values certain values and we need to store those certain values like test score train uh, uh, the train scores and the test scores etc and uh, to do that I need to get it into the train sizes and then train scores then here we need to get here the test scores right perfect so we have got here the train size the train scores and the test scores so it has finished the training here right so this is the uh, the training test size 5 15 25 etc etc so this is the overall uh, the training training size on which it has trained the model now let's go ahead now let's go ahead and get the mean value of the uh, the train score so that we can set here uh, the train sorry train mean the train mean is np dot mean and uh, there we get the train scores okay and we need to get the meaning along with axis one and if you see here train mean value so this is the train mean value and if you count these total uh, the length it will be 50 that's mean here if you see here we have um, we have divided our training data set into 50 uh, 50 sub samples okay and apart from that let's go ahead and get the accuracy and to get the accuracy what we need to do oops train train std okay it's equal to the np dot std and there we have a train scores along with axis 1 so here we have a train std so this is the standard deviation of the training accuracy and now let's go ahead and get the accuracy on the testing data set so the, on the testing data set we need to get here the test mean so the test mean is equal to np dot mean and then here i'm going to pass here the test scores along with axis is equal to 1 now let's go ahead and see the mean accuracy on the testing data set on the testing data set we have this mean accuracy which is somewhere around 95.8 or somewhere uh, uh, in between 95 and the 96 now let's go ahead and get the standard deviation on the test data set so, and that is the test underscore std is equal to np dot std and then here we have a test scores and that is along with axis is equal to one okay so here we have a test std now you see here we have a total here of 50 okay perfect now apart from that let's go ahead and uh, plot these 50 uh, the mean test accuracy and these standard deviation as well so i'm gonna plot these me standard deviation uh, and mean test accuracy as well as the training accuracy together to do that we need to use uh, uh, the matplotlib pi plot so we are gonna use plt dot plot okay so here we need to first pass x so x is the train mean uh, sorry the x is train size and uh, y is here a train mean okay perfect now you see here so this is the accuracy on the training data set and the similarly we can also plot here our the testing as well so here the test mean now you see here 
so here we have this is the training accuracy and there is the testing accuracy now if you see here as we are increasing here the data set number of data set the testing accuracy is increasing okay so it has increased exponentially for some point but after that it has started saturating so it proves that if we increase our data set infinitely that will not guarantee that you, your overall accuracy will increase so that means there is some limit on the model complexity and the date num uh, size of the data set from where we cannot increase or improve the accuracy that means we need to work on the better model instead of just increasing the total number of the data set now let's go ahead and do some uh, uh, the decoration and uh, to do that i'm gonna put here uh, uh, the label first i'm gonna just put here label label is equal to the first one is the training score and the similarly for second one second one is cross validation score okay perfect so after uh, once i start uh, putting the legends then you will get here okay now let's go ahead uh, first give a title to this one so the title i'm gonna just go, uh, going to give here a uh, learning curve okay so here we have a plt dot x label in the x label here we have a training size plt dot y label in the y label we have here accuracy score and here we have a plt dot legend and there we have location is best okay perfect now let's go ahead and plot this so you see here we have training score and cross validation score so this is the training side and here is accuracy score now let's go ahead and plot the standard deviation around these lines and then we will see how uh, accuracy of training and the testing set is varying as uh, with, the, with the cross validation since this is tenfold cross validation then there has there is a there is 10 accuracy values for each of these training data sizes and that's why we had calculated mean there so let's go ahead and draw a bands around these lines and to draw those bands we need to call the plt dot fill so once we have plt dot fill underscore between and then we have a train train sizes and then we have here the train mean minus train std okay here as well we have a train mean a plus train std okay and the color for which i'm gonna plot this that is gonna be kind of a gray and similarly i can just copy it and paste it and then here i can change it to uh, the test mean and here as well uh, the test std and similarly here i can do here the test mean and here uh, the test std okay perfect now you can see here a perfect plot for a learning curve okay so we have plotted here a learning curve for a random forest classifier on a breast cancer data set perfect so this is all about in this video please do not forget to subscribe this channel and if you like this video please uh, like this video and if you have any doubt please comment below bye bye have a nice day